welcome to the Fiber Tales podcast. My name is Lerge and I'm coming to you from the southern part of Fyn in Denmark um, where I live with my partner and little girl and soon to come out, <laughs> not so soon, in, it will be in the winter, we will have another little one. Um, I moved to a different location in the house as you can see. Uh, so I hope this one will work out for today. I just had to find a quiet corner and um, I have a lot to talk about today. So uh, just to introduce the podcast, it's a podcast about knitting. Sometimes I do some sewing um, and I talk about designing as well. So you can find me everywhere and my designs as Fiber Tales both on Instagram, where I'm probably most active, and on Ravelry, and I think that's all for introduction today. Let's start out with what I'm wearing. So today I'm wearing a cardigan, which is a new design. Uh, I'm not gonna show too much because I like to show the design once it's been released, uh, but I just um, opened up for testing and you can read more about testing in my in the Ravelry group and I still have a few spots uh, left for this cardigan um, I have some let me just check I think it's size yeah it's size extra small perhaps and large and extra extra large so unless somebody volunteered in while I'm doing this podcast I uh, if you can knit any of those sizes, I would really like if you would jump into the thread in the Ravelry group and let me know. Um, yeah, it's knit in uh, Uist Kanach. Uh, it's a yarn I bought at Edinburgh Yarn Festival. And it's, um, I think it's 100% merino. Uh, and it is very soft and very plump and very fun to knit with and it has the most beautiful speckles in here like natural color speckles it's in the Osna colorway um, and yeah I will talk more about the design and everything once the pattern is ready for release I hope it will be ready in about a month from now um, and it's super exciting. It's always fun to put out a pattern for testing and see if I get testers in the first place and then try to figure out all the logistic behind the testing and get it started. And it's a lot of work, but I think it's a lot of fun too. Oh, and I actually, it's also a finished object for this week because I put on the buttons. So these are buttons that I actually just, oh, I missed one, that I added on, I took from another cardigan um, and just like little they're supposed to look like shell I guess like sort of shell or something but they're just plastic I have another finished object which I showed you last time and it's these little adorable adorable salvo mittens um, they look like this on the back they have no thumb they are for babies so they don't really need to be have a thumb and last time I had knitted one and I knit the other one pretty fast and this um, is a free pattern on Ravelry by Tina Hauglund she's also Strecke Silla on uh, Instagram and um, yeah they're really fun knit it's uh, just a chart with a few lines of explanation and I'm pretty sure you could knit it even if it's in Norwegian it's really simple, you just have to follow the chart and there's like the increases and that's it. Um, uh, sorry, the decreases. And uh, one more did I want to say. Yes, I knit this in, uh, this is Ingleul, which is a merino, but like a rustic merino. Uh, I think it's the light. So there's a heavier and a light weight uh, yarn in this one. Um, not Ingleul, Inglegarn. England. Okay, 
it's all in my Rav on my Ravelry page and I link it always down below so you can find all the info. And this one is a Jameson and Smith. As you can see, I didn't use almost anything. I pulled from the center, so it also cheats a bit. But And this is in the... Um, see? You can see it's in the 1 to 2 mix shade. Uh, and it was just a very fun, quick little knit. When I finished this one it looked bigger and especially when i was blocking it it looked bigger but then it just shrunk down to be exactly the same size i did a two by two rip instead of a one by one so that's a modification and i made a mistake in the pattern on the back you can see yeah it looks like there's a mistake here so it's not a mistake but i made a mistake in the pattern, it was supposed to be like a crisscross pattern and I just decided that I liked it so I didn't feel like changing this uh, changing it once I realized after a few rows and I actually think it's quite nice with this back so you can do whatever you want and actually the pattern it has just an empty chart so you could fill in anything you, you think would be fun and I think I would like to try to to make another pair maybe for my daughter but she would need a thumb so i have to check if i can use this one for her size as well um yeah that's all i want to say about this one uh and i posted them as part of the uh, tiny knit scale that i'm hosting on ravelry and also on instagram and it's just a call to have fun and work on baby knits and share your progress, share your finished objects, share any kind of yarn suggestions and pattern suggestions. I mean, it's just for, yeah, support and community around baby knitting. Um, so if you want to know more, you can go to the Ravelry page and read about, uh, there's a thread for the um, Tiny Knits Cal. Uh, and I, the rules are pretty simple. You can knit pretty much whatever you want. You just have to have started after the 15th of August. And I don't know, it will run for quite some time. I'm sure maybe until the spring or something. Um, and I still don't have any prices. Uh, I have to think of something. Um, so for now, no prices, but it will come. And I don't know if there are any other. Crochet is welcome. Somebody asked me, baby blankets are welcome. Anything up until the age of four max. Uh, I wanted to put three, but somebody asked me if she could join two with a four year old, and I was like, yeah, why not? I just want this to be fun and like a nice way to share baby knits because they're so cute. Look at these. Do -do -do -do. So that's a finished object. And so my daughter, she saw I was knitting these, and therefore the little baby coming. And she was saying, and you need some for me, are you gonna need some for, some for me? And I would like to knit some for her, but I just didn't feel like casting on another pair straight away. I don't know. So instead, I cast on a pair of socks for her because she will need some for the daycare, I'm pretty sure. And I cast on oh, all the threads, uh, just the 44 stitch count on a 2.25 millimeter Chiago. No, they're not. Yeah, that's Yago. Yep. Um, and I have this yarn. It's just leftover yarn from my Birkin sweater. It's yarn from Urso Yanko. Um, so this was one of the contrasting flower colors. And this was the main body color. And I just had some left. So I thought, why not use some to knit her little pair of socks. And I actually first thought to do the whole body white or the, the, the lighter color. But then I realized that when <laughs> they will be, look so dirty because in the daycare, it's sometimes people wear shoes in there and it's not that, not a daycare, it's a kindergarten now. She's in the kindergarten. Uh, it's not that clean, at least not now. Maybe in the winter they will like tell people to not walk in with shoes. I don't know what is the, what's gonna happen with that. But I thought it would be better to have a stripe or something so that they won't look too dirty. <laughs> uh, and I'm planning to do the the contrasting color on the heels, cuff and toe. And um, yeah, and then just stripe. Like I do a three rows of the light color and one row of the 
hot pink. So that's the plan. Um, I really like the yarn. I talked about it a lot. Uh, this is just a sock yarn superwash. Uh, I mean, I really like the colors. The yarn for me is it's good for socks, I guess. Uh, but and it's I know that superwash yarn is used by dyers because it really takes the dye really well. Um, and in a different way, you cannot dye the same colors on a non superwash yarn, uh, or you have to use different techniques and so on. But um, yeah, I think it's fine for socks, so I'm gonna use it up for socks. So that's a little work in progress, uh, and I will try to work on these when I feel like working on something mindless, because I'm doing a lot of uh, patterns right now, designing. Mm. And sometimes you really just need something mindless to work on. So, other than that, I've been working on two new designs and one of them is looking like this. Mm, isn't it pretty? <laughs> I have ripped this bag so many times and this is knit in Plutulopi, uh, which is an Icelandic yarn. It's a uh, uh, unspun, let me just take a yarn that you get in plates. It smells really nice and sheepy uh, and the yarn is as you can see just uh, unspun so if I pull it it will break. Uh, I don't find I don't have any problems knitting with it um, when it comes to breaking and so on. I think it's actually fine because you have to kind of pull from from two distant points and yeah it's not a problem. Uh, only thing I have to remind myself of in, of in the beginning I kept doing this so when I am running out of yarn when I'm knitting I just pull because I'm used to having a ball that will roll away or like from a cake and if you just pull this it will break <laughs> so I I stopped doing that so you kind of have to like unwind it as you go um, really carefully but if you do that it for me it doesn't break and if it starts to break it's really easy to to split splice it or split spit splice it or split splice <laughs> I don't remember you just take a bit of spit or water and just roll the two pieces of yarn and they will kind of go back together it's really easy with this type of yarn so where I had some uh, I had problems with the um, with the design I mean I was, I'm a bit lazy with this one so I didn't plan too much I just need and I realized that things are not working out the way I want them to, so I had to rip back. I ripped back once, and when you rip back, um, you can rip back, but the yarn just gets a little more fragile, I feel. And then I tried to knit with it again, and oh, I had to. There were a lot of thin spots in the yarn, and I, I, I started regretting it more and more <laughs> as I was going. But you can do that. It's not impossible, but I just didn't feel like it was working out the way. I felt not so happy about the result. I, there were some thin spots, and of course, you can go back in and um, and du duplicate stitch those if you're really nervous. I did that a few places, but then I got to the end of what I thought I was doing, and I realized that it's not working. I did I made a mistake in the calculation, so the pattern is not repeating the way I want to. So I'm not gonna rip this bag one more time. I'm simply gonna cut the the yarn um, after the 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 neck the color and just take new yarn because I think I've what ripping out once is okay, but ripping out twice and reusing the yarn it's just it's too fragile. So uh, I have to start over with this one, which means it's a lot of knitting for nothing and that's I guess that's how designing is I have heard that from other designers just take a deep breath and and I know if I do a little bit more if I'm a little bit more careful about calculating and planning first then I should have less unraveling but when I have an idea I really want to start it straight away I really want to see it form I mean I, I swatched at least I'm swatching <laughs> But I really, I get so eager and knitting is quite slow, as we all know, so you kind of have to 
you just want to go you just want to see if it works out if the idea is gonna work because that's how it is with designing sometimes the ideas work sometimes they don't and that's just the way it is with designing so that one I'm just taking a breath that's why I started the socks I'm just gonna relax a little bit and rip that part back or cut it off and pick up from under the neckline and then start working again I figured out what's wrong I hope the third time will work out much better and I will be happy with it and actually while I was working on this uh, Clotolopi I was watching a podcast and I don't remember the name of the podcast something hip hip baba <laughs> something it's a long name but she's called Linda and she's uh, Icelandic and she's doing an Icelandic cal right now so I thought it's uh, it could be fun to to use this uh, this project in the cal it's a design so i won't be able to post anything right now so i don't know if i will join but if you're working on icelandic yarn i would suggest you join the icelandic knit everything icelandic something like that cal uh, i will put the info down below another project i've been working on that has been taking a lot of my time and is right now causing me a bit of a headache is this shawl i showed you before it's a design i'm working on it's knit in the most wonderful yarn which unfortunately has been discontinued it's a blacker yarn it's called samite um the ball band is here it's a, a wool and silk blend and it's woolen spun which is quite interesting and it's like it just has a lot of texture um like the silk doesn't take the um, the dye the same way as the wool so there's a little bit of like a tweedy effect and i really like this yarn and i'm working on this one and i had two skates and right now i'm working on an applied border which i don't have and i can just see i don't have enough yarn i have this much left and so i don't know what exactly i'm gonna do because I looked on Ravelry if I could find anyone selling this yarn um, in this colorway, which is called uh, Autumn Bowers. Bowers? Bowers? It's here. Um, yeah, so I looked if I could find anyone selling this yarn from the stash. No one has it up for sale. I could perhaps write people and ask them, but I don't know. I feel like that's also a bit intrusive uh, and it's not for sale anymore they're not making it anymore so I, I will have to do a little bit of searching and see if I can find it anywhere and of course it would have to be the same um, lot and it's the lot number 610 I think it has the something down here it's like a lot of writing R slash I semite lace out bower and then 610 so um, I got a little lost there yeah so what I was saying is just I have this applied border that's quite thick and I did it on all on one side and I just kept going because I could see that the yarn was probably not going to be enough but I thought okay I will at least try to block it and see if this, this border even works because if it doesn't look nice then I'm not going to go through a lot of trouble so that's I need I'm just missing a little bit on the one side and I will try to block it and see if yeah if I if if it's worth it and then so I have two options I can either just finish with what I have left and I could still publish the pattern because one side is done and if it looks nice and I do a little bit of the other side I can see if the, the pattern will work but then I will be left with a shawl that has no that's not finished and I really want to wear it and also for pictures it would be a little bit disastrous to try to have pictures of the sample that is not done um, so that's one thing and then the other problem yeah, so that's one option. And the other option would be to rip it all back and to knit a more narrow um, applied border. But then I would have to change the, the design and do something different. 
which I think would be nice as well. I don't know. I'm I'm so yeah. I'm a little stuck with this one. Um, mainly because I don't have enough yarn. If I had enough yarn, I would just keep going with the first the original idea. So that I've been knitting a lot on this, and it's just ah, so annoying. <laughs> So a lot of design setbacks, even though I'm enjoying working with these two yarns, they're really beautiful yarns. Um, and it's a pity that Blacker Yarns decided to discontinue the Samite, I guess maybe it was not selling well enough or they want to have make space for other yarns, I don't know. But it's a really beautiful yarn. So that was it for my works in progress and finished objects. I. I have a lot of ideas and things I want to cast on, but I'm just gonna try to finish these two designs and focus on them because I know when I get into some trouble, I, it's really easy that they just get, I put them on ice and then they're not really going anywhere. And I really wanted to have them out for this fall or at least for the winter. So I'm gonna keep on going with those. I wanted to talk about something really exciting that I've been doing this, week on to i don't remember when was it last sometimes last week i went on a little trip if you follow me on instagram you would have seen i went to visit um, a local uh, yarn mill uh, which is called yelholt ulspinneri and yelholt is an the only there are only two mills left in Denmark doing um, spinning people's yarn. Like you can, I'm sure it has a word in English. I will try to see if I can find it. But uh, yeah, you can bring your own wool in and they will spin it. One is uh, Yelholt and they do down to really small amounts. Uh, I think the minimum is 15 kilos. And the other one is called Eriksen. I think it's Eriksen. And oh, Henriksen. Oh God, Henriksen. I think it's Henriksen. <laughs> Anyways, that one you need to have bigger amounts. So I think the minimum is 150 kilos for them to spin. And that's actually where Isaiah has the yarn spun and other Danish, um, yeah, uh, yarn companies have the wool spun. Um, but Yelhald is. Uh, very local to me it's actually the family lives in the next village to my parents and the, the mill is very nearby and they've been doing it for generations and it's really it's really nice and cozy to come there and visit and uh, actually they do little tours so you can if you i think you have to contact them to hear when they have the a tour you can join or if you come as a group you can ask but i just asked if i could we could go in and see me and my mom and my dad all went for a little trip and um, and it was lovely just to see the meal. I have footage I will put in um, and uh, yeah, it was absolutely amazing to see. The machines are really old, they're from 1940s and uh, they were bought in the 80s but they are really, they're old machines so everything is wood and metal and like it's just so beautiful and that big bags of fleece everywhere and and wool all kind of wool and they were spinning actually a kind of plutolopi um, like a yarn unspun yarn when i was there and i didn't ask who was having that spun it looked really beautiful so i kicking myself a little bit i have to figure out who is getting yeah who's selling maybe it's a danish company but they also spin he told us he has uh, wool from the netherlands and other places that people sent to him so um it could be it's not a danish yarn and they were i asked if i could film a little bit so yeah i have some footage i would like to show you
just so fascinating to get in there. The great thing is, um, he, he, my parents, they know the family, and so it, it's nice to come there and just talk a little bit. And they actually had their sheep. Um, they have their sheep in many different places. Uh, they they have them grassing <laughs> different fields, and they have been also on my dad's uh, land. But uh, not anymore. They just move them around, and they have uh, sheep dogs. Sheep dogs. I feel like that's too easy. Anyway, and they do the whole. Uh, they train them, and when they come to gather the the flock, it's really fun to watch. Um, so, yeah, and uh, I really like Yelhold uh, as a. It's a spinnery. It's very simple. They are a little bit old-fashioned in some ways. For example, they don't sell, they don't have a web shop, they just have a website, but you cannot buy from the website. So you have to find... People often ask me in, in comments if uh, where you can buy the wool from Yelholt, because I talked about it in my Reutso sweater and I talked about it other times. And you cannot buy from the website, but they are on Ravelry. If you search the yarn, you will always get suggestions in the right side, in the bottom of uh, places to buy the yarn and I know there are some Danish yarn shops selling this yarn so it should be possible to find someone who some a yarn shop that will ship abroad for example um, they have their own yarn which is called they have different names but the Pelsul and it's generally a Gotland yarn but they also have Merino uh, when you spin Gotland you mix in some Merino generally because the Gotland it's a little hard to spin, so they mix in at least around 10% to, to make it easier to spin. Um, and yeah, they had some other yarns uh, there, but the, the main yarn is the um, Dansk Pelsul. And I actually bought a little skein, uh, so you can see the, the label. They have it in two sizes, so this is the eight two and they have a 5.52 as well which is the one I used for my Reuto sweater uh, I just had to get this one when I was there because the color is so nice this is a little 50 gram skein um, and the color is very beautiful I made a free pattern for a headband which I think I have let me just get it so last year I made um, a free pattern for this uh, uh, headband which is just a simple twisted headband but it's uh, in brioche and has a nice edge and uh, it's a free pattern on Ravelry um, and as you can see this is the same yarn as this one and I held this one double uh, and you can see here it doesn't look fluffy and soft at all it's soft but it's like rustic so but once you start wearing it, this is what I love about the Gotland yarn, is that it just gets this beautiful halo and it gets so soft. So my idea was to knit another one. So I have two headbands because I use these a lot when I'm biking. Um, a hat is really, at least with my hair, that's very thick. It just kind of pushes hats up. Um, so I really like to wear headbands. I can put them under the, the ponytail. And they just stay where they're supposed to stay. So I got this beautiful heathery pur purple mo like a purpley grey brown. I think it will be make a very nice headband, maybe for a present or maybe for me. But I think if I remember correctly, I got yeah, I got three headbands out of the hundred grams, so and I still had some left. I think I could squeeze out two headbands of this skein. So uh, I will put a link to the pattern if you haven't seen it. It's a, yeah, it's a way to try one of my patterns if you feel like seeing what they're like. And also, it's a way to easy way to try uh, brioche, um, and it's only one color. Uh, so I recommend checking that out. It's called Dreyu. Dreyu is uh, an island down here in the southern part of Fyn. Oh. It's a uh, quite. 
it's quite funny because I live now next to the forest and someone is driving by with a, I think, a lawn mona. Hmm. And there's no one here and it's a small dirt road, so I'm pretty curious <laughs> what is happening. <laughs> I hope it's not gonna be really noisy because they actually asked us if we wanted the lawn mowned and uh, because the grass started growing after the dry spell we had where the grass was just not moving anywhere it started growing and we still haven't bought a lawn mona it's a really boring thing for me to spend money on so i'm kind of <laughs> postponing it but they asked if they should come and cut the grass and i think they might have chosen the perfect time so if you can hear some noise for the rest of the episode i'm really sorry it's that's the way it is <laughs> apparently today of all days um, yeah, and one last thing I wanted to mention about uh, the wool is when I talked to the to the owner, uh, it was really nice because I, I just asked him something about superwash and his face was just like, no, we don't do superwash here. <laughs> they are really, uh, the, the yarn is very natural and very beautiful and it's non-superwash and they, yeah, they, they, the yarn it's all wool and spun it's a uh, it's a very nice yeah they have a very nice way of going about it and I really I really love to go there and if you are in the on Fyn I would really recommend to take a visit to their little they have a little shop and uh, at the mill so you can buy the yarn you will see that in the footage I don't know if I put it before or after but you will have seen it or you will see it so then I actually thought that that would be it for visits this this week because I I thought oh I have done a lot of yarny things and I'm I'm really busy with my patterns and I'm really feeling good about everything. But then I was I went to Svendborg, which is the town, the most southern town of Fyn or one of the most southern, and that's where I went to high school and we're living pretty close nearby now. It's about ten minutes with the train. So I went there, uh, I had a midwife appointment and while I was there I thought to visit this shop that I've been I've been stalking on Instagram for quite some time because I think it's so cool. Um it's uh it's called the Handmaker Line uh and it's a Danish girl who is um she made a little shop uh on the harbor in some of the old uh, industrial buildings and it's a uh, She's she's a machine knitting um, garments and ha sh shawls and hats and stuff. Um, she knits. She uses the machine by hand, so it's not hand knitted in the way in the sense the way we hand knit most uh, knitters. But it's uh, yeah, she works with the with the yarn and the wool, and she makes the patterns and so on. And I think it's really cool and it's beautiful stuff she makes. Uh, it's really fine finely knitted, so. Uh, it's the kind of knitting I probably wouldn't feel like doing myself like um, she makes little tank tops and they're so nice and airy um, and I really think it's it's so great that that we have this kind of handmade uh, stuff and little businesses So I went to, to pay her a little visit and the shop is absolutely beautiful. She also sells little plants in the window and she has it set up really nicely. And it was just so nice to meet her. So Lina, if you're watching, hi. Um, we had a really nice talk and I felt so inspired when I left. It was, it was so great to meet someone local who is also doing stuff with yarn and knitting and yeah creating a small business and um, I might 
I'm really we're trying to figure out if we could do some workshops there. Her space is absolutely beautiful and it would just be so amazing. So I'm trying to think if I could do some workshops there or some classes. Um yeah, I'm just trying to plan and see what could be what could be possible. I think it would be a lot of fun and I since I moved I would also like to to make a little bit of a a community down here in the south there's a lot of creative people living in the southern part of the island so i think it could be possible even if we're in the countryside it could be possible to make something really really fun and yeah so that was that's a bit of a plans in the making um so 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 <laughs> and actually i forgot to say about yelhold when i went to yelhold i also have some plans i went there with a purpose but i'm not gonna tell you more about it right now um yeah there will be more news about why i went there in the in the fall and i can't wait to share with you because i'm super excited um yes but coming back to the handmaker line uh, i would of course as well show you some some footage but i just felt so inspired and i'm really i'm really thinking if i could do something similar or like open a little because the shop works a bit like a pop-up shop so it's only a few days a week and maybe i could try to to make something down there i have so many ideas it's just about time and figuring out um yeah what will work um It's so funny because today I really felt like I have so much to talk about. But when I have so much to talk about, I talk fast and and I'm really eager to tell everything. So yeah, finally it's probably not gonna be too long. I really want to end it here um, and hopefully I will be back soon and can show you more. And yeah, I think I will be back before the release of this one and maybe I can show you some of the other designs I'm working on. I just want them to be more or less done when I start showing them off. Um, and that's it. I hope it was really lovely to talk to you all. I hope you had a nice time and I will see you soon. Bye.